Let's talk sheep to sheep today. Sheep to sheep, okay? We're going to be talking about the very fact that you can hear from God, and I want you to be empowered by the end of this discussion with the knowledge and the comfort knowing that you can truly hear from God. And you may be like, Ricky, what are you talking about, like sheep to sheep? Well, at the end of the day, what the Bible lets us know, that as the sheep of God, my sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow, as it reads in verses. And I'll talk through it and even talk through my experiences of how I was able to and now am able able to clearly hear from God and how he's directed me from what college to attend, from who my wife is, to where to move, to where to move again, to now with us now living and moved to Johannesburg, South Africa, and the list continues to go on. So even the nitty gritty things, right? I'm getting ahead of myself already, but it's so cool because I'm excited about your ability to be able to hear from God and your comfort knowing that God wants you to hear from him. And so today we'll come out of John chapter 10 and we'll look at verse 27, right? And then we'll just expand and go from there, largely because in growing up in the faith, like I said in other podcast episodes, I grew up in the church. I've been raised in the church and what I know is church. And with it, I had the understanding that only the pastor can hear from God. Only the ministers, the preachers can hear from God because clearly they have a word from God for me to hear. But throughout my everyday living, I'm not hearing from God, right? I'm not able to do and say all the things that they're able to do and to say. So, you know, maybe I'll just keep going to church and hear from them and that'll be my hearing from him. Well, no, outside of Sundays, outside of Wednesdays or whatever days you do go to church, God wants to speak to you. God has things specifically designed for you. Why? Because we're all specifically unique. We all have a purpose and a plan and a destiny to fulfill for our own lives. Therefore, the creator of heaven and earth has a need for you to hear what he has to say to you, right? Just as God has it for me, God has it for you, you and them other yous that are watching today. And so in John chapter 10, verse 27, this is going to give us like that anchor, right? Because it's always good. And let me say this, as you grow, develop and mature in your ability to hear from God and to respond from God, it's always good to have a scripture that you can be anchored to, right? Because yes, God is saying things. That's the rhema word. What is God saying now in the present? But as well, I believe that God's words to Today are anchored to what he has said, which is in the Bible's the Logos word. And so here it says in John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And again, this is coming from the New Living Translation. So it's giving it to us straight. No chase. All right. My sheep hear my voice. As sheep, you and I are both sheep, right? And a lot, oftentimes, people don't like to be called sheep. They like to be called lions and eagles and lions and lions and lions. However, it's a beautiful thing to be called sheep, right? To be known as God's precious sheep. Oftentimes, sheep have a reputation of not being the smartest animals. However, they are highly intelligent, somewhat close to a pig. Believe it or not, pigs are actually very intelligent. And so much so that sheep has the ability to go through a maze and get out of a maze by remembering what the directions were. But then oftentimes, too, sheep has the ability to recognize faces and so as well as names. And that's a beautiful thing. Oh, to be remembered and to know your name and to know when God is talking to you. That's a beautiful thing. And so just think, sheep are animals that likes to be in herds, right? They feel comfort in herds, but then they're also animals that like to be around others like them for comfort and for strength, right? And so as believers, we should see ourselves. It's okay to know of yourself as one of God's precious sheep, one of Jesus's sheep. And so here in John chapter 10, verse 27, the word sheep here has the understanding of leading leading by or led by God, right? God is the shepherd and God being the shepherd leads the sheep. And so being led by God, we're able to have the direction, have the comfort, have the peace that God being our shepherd is the one leading and guiding us. And it's his voice that we are listening to. It's his voice that we're attentive to. It's his voice that is the guy letting us know whether we should go left, whether we should go right, whether we should look out for danger or whether we've come to a place where we can rest. I even think about uh, Psalms, right, where it lets us know that his rod and his staff, it comforts me. Those are the tools of a shepherd, right? Even back then, 
then David was giving us a foreknowledge of who God was, who God is, and who God will be in our lives. He's a shepherd, right? His rod, his staff, his rod is the one that, you know, comforts us, protects us. His staff is the one that keeps us, it gets us if we may flip, fall, or fumble, right? The staff is there to bring us back together. And so I love here where it lets us know that, no, like if you are God's sheep, if you are a believer, if you are one who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you have the ability to hear from God and hear the voice of God. And not only that, but it says, I know them. Not only do we get an opportunity to get to know God, to get to pray to God, to get to hear from God, but God knows us. And the beautiful thing about that, ladies and gentlemen, is with him knowing us, he knows what we're dealing with. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we're hiding from him or attempting to hide from him. And he also knows what we actually need to know, right? So oftentimes when we pray and we ask God for things and we ask to hear from God, we'll ask out of what we think we need. However, with him knowing us, he knows exactly what we need and knows how to speak directly to that and speak us out of whatever pit we may find ourselves in, whatever distraction we may find ourselves in. God's voice has the ability to speak to us, us hear from him and be guided into all truth, right? So here's an example of that, ladies and gentlemen. I was in college at Vidasa State University back in 2009, right? And it was a period and point in my life where I knew I was in a space, in a place where I wasn't going to progress. I wasn't pleasing God. I wasn't doing things that were truly even pleasing me. I was doing what I thought I should do as a man and as a college student and, you know, put all those things together. You can get an idea of what was going on. And so I knew I needed to change. And so I prayed, God, like, help. Like, I know this isn't it. I know this isn't where I'm supposed to be. I know this isn't the life I'm supposed to live. I feel like if I stay in this space, in this place, it's not going to work out great for my life. And so I, I need I need somewhere. I need to go somewhere else. But I knew I did want to remain in school. And so the next day, believe it or not, a neighbor across the hallway came and she shared with me that she wanted to go to LSU for law school. And I was like, LSU? Okay, like, I've heard of it. I've heard of the football team. I heard Shaq went there and a couple other basketball players went there, Shaq and baby Shaq. Um, But in it, I never thought about going there. So I looked it up. I was like, oh, this is a cool school. I applied there. And I... Oh, man, this is pretty cool. On the way to visit the school with my parents, very supportive of me and the different things that I do in life, a song came on, right? So two instances where God spoke to me and answering my prayer. So I'm getting ahead of myself, right? I'm, um, I have it like mapped out throughout this week how we'll strengthen our ability to hear from God. And uh, so here I'm talking on the, the fact of like when you ask God will give us the answer. When you ask, you shall receive. When you seek, you'll find. When you knock, the door will be answered. We'll get to that another day. However, here it shows up where I ask God, right? And I receive from God. And so oftentimes we look to hear from God in either a loud audible voice or a burning bush scenario or other Old Testament ways in which God spoke to his people. And I love those examples and those stories that lets us know, one, that God is diligent about giving us answers, right? When we seek God, we'll be able to receive from God. And these were people that didn't even have Holy Spirit living within them. These were people who had to offer sacrifices and things like that to be right with God. But oh, how greater it is for us here today on the other side of Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection, where we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We have the promise of him being the Holy Spirit will only speak to us what the Father says, only say those things that God wants us to know and that is always with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. However, I ask, I ask God, please, God, show me. I need to, I need it. I need it. I need somewhere. She came over. Boom. Okay. Applied. All right. This could be the school. On the way to the visitation, um, like I had some crazy criteria of what I wanted out of a school. Like basically I wanted it to be a school (laughs) that had palm trees because I really like warm weather. And so palm trees are one of the things that I wanted and uh, like a design that had like a Mediterranean type feel. Like I love clay roofs and things like that. So those are two things that I was looking for that I was like, oh, it has to have it. Why? Because Vadasta have it. And at the same time, when you're wanting more from God, when you're wanting a change, when you're wanting something 
something different. Oftentimes we hold on to things that don't even matter that will give us comfort or ways in which, you know, that are trying to keep us where we're at as opposed to where God wants us to be. And so at the end of the day, you know, that's that's for somebody that wasn't even a part of the notes, the show notes. But nonetheless, on the way to Baton Rouge, Louisiana from Atlanta, Georgia, a song came on. My father, my father loves Michael Jackson and I'll be there was playing. And, you know, I'll be there. I can't sing. I'll be there. Just call my name. I'll be there. And as Michael was singing, right, God was saying to me those same words. I'll be there. I'll be there with you. This is the move that I want for you. You'll experience growth. You'll experience change. You'll grow in who you are, who I've designed you and created you to be. And you'll grow in the knowledge of and the ability to hear my voice was the things that God was saying. And prior to that, let me tell you all this. Prior to that, I knew of God. I knew scriptures. My dad preached. My dad pastored. My dad led. However, like having that level of relationship and communication with God, I had not had until that trip. However, in my communications with God, God confirmed where I should go, which is there. And so I was crying and you know, you know how it is. You get emotional, like, oh man, this is truly where I need to be, truly where I should go. And so I shared the moment with my parents because they was like, what was going on? Um, My mom was thinking I was missing a girl that I was dating and so forth and so on. And I shared with them, no, this is where God had instructed me and told me on this trip where I should be. And so thankfully, like, you know, not that it mattered at that point, because definitely want to get to the point where when God says a thing to us, we actually do it. Right. And even if you may not know the timing that God will want you to perform or to do the things in which he's saying, you should ask him for that timing. But we'll get to that point as well throughout this week. However, that was the place that God would have for me to be. And on that trip, I saw the palm trees on that trip. I saw the clay roofs on that trip. I had the warm weather, the good food, the great people and everything. It checked all the boxes. Right. And I blossomed and bloomed like God said I would. I came into my calling to teach the word. And I was able to do different things and grow different ministries and so forth and so on. And God radically used me in that space. And so all that to say, what he said was so. However, he knew me, right? He knew where I should be. I was actually considering another school to go to. I applied to LSU and ODU, Old Dominion University, which is in Virginia, closer to my mom's side of the family. And so God knew me. God knew, like he said, I know them. He knows his sheep. He knows you. He knows exactly what you need, where you should go, what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, and where you should go to be able to do the things that he's designed and purpose for you to do. Therefore, we should seek him, right? But in this passage of scripture, as I share the truth of my life, I pray that you're coming into the awareness, coming into the comfort, coming into the confidence that God not only wants you to hear him, but he has something specifically for you. But then it goes on and says, I know them and they follow me, right? Not only do we hear his voice. Not only does he knows us, but we follow him. That's the three part, which, you know, I love God. I love how God does things and in, 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 uh, ways, right? The three parts, right? My sheep hear my voice, part number one. I know them, part number two, and they follow me, part number three. What good is it to pray, to hear from God, to ask to hear from God, to want to hear from God, to hear a word from God, but then not do it? We're doing ourselves a disservice. We're doing ourselves a disgrace. We're doing ourselves a bummer, right? At the end of the day, we're not benefiting ourselves because we're able to hear from the creator of all, from the one that created all, the one that created your life and knows the end from the beginning. However, in it, when we pray to him, we should follow the voice that he says. We should follow him. And you may be thinking, how do I know it's his voice? Well, we're going to talk about that this week. How do I know this is truly God and not myself, not my desires, not my wants? We're going to talk about that this week, and I pray that you tap in and tune in throughout this week's podcast, because at the end of it, my declaration, my prayer, my desire is for us all to not only know that we can hear from God, from us to be able to hear from God, but then us knowing that he knows us, knows everything about us, but then we're actually active in responding to the voice of God. And so even throughout my days, right, I spend time with God. I 
spend communion time with God. I pray, right? But then not only do I pray, and this often is the case for all believers, right? A lot of us pray. Some of us pray prayers that we've been praying for years. Some of us pray prayers out of the desperation or the space that we're in. But what I want you all to start doing, even today, right? Let's even start being active today, is start to pray. But in us finishing our prayer, let's sit there. Right. We said all that we needed to say to God, but let us sit there to hear what God has to say to us, because prayer is a dual way of communication. Right. If it wasn't prayer, it would be a monologue. A lot of us are having monologue conversations or, in other words, one person speaking with God. We're not sitting there, staying there remaining there to hear what God has to say to us, even specifically to what we just prayed to him. A lot of us are asking for answers, but we're not sitting there to hear what he has to say to the questions that we ask. We're asking God to tell us things and we're wanting him to show us things, but then oftentimes we're wanting it to come from other people. And it's okay to get confirmation from others, but at the same time, if you have the ability to hear from the one that created all and knows all and has the answers for us all, why not get it from him? Why not get it straight from the source? No need of getting a, a reference or, you know, a confirmation word from somebody, but using it as the affirming word or the exact word. But let us sit long enough to hear from God specifically and directly. And I believe and declare that he will speak to you. You will hear him as you are his sheep. You know his voice and you, my friend, will follow him. So I'll end a prayer by saying, I thank you, Lord God, that we all are empowered to hear you. You. I thank you, Lord God, for people being set free, for people being unblocked from ending hindrance and allowing us the ability to come into the full understanding of God's voice and God's guidance. I thank you, Lord God, that you desire to speak to us all and out of our desire now to hear from you. I thank you that we're unblocked from any hindrance, any satanic or demonic force that may be trying to stop, block or hinder us from hearing from you. I thank you. We now have the understanding. We now have the courage. We now have the wisdom to know that you desire to speak to us, that we can hear from you, that you will give us an on-time word, and that, Father God, all is well. It's in Jesus' name I pray, the name above all names, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go and knowing that you can hear from God, right? But then also, I want to give y'all, like, I want to start a monthly newsletter that gives you scriptures, that gives you an encouraging word, and that reminds you of whose you are because of who created you. And so all you have to do is uh, put down below, right? If you're watching on YouTube, comment, uh, what are we going to comment? Let's comment newsletter, comment newsletter in the comments, and I'll make sure that I get a reach out to you and those things from there. But if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, what you can do is find me on Instagram or email me at uh, my e Instagram is Ricky Jones Jr. And my email is Ricky Jones Jr. at YML.com. Either one of those ways, any one of those things will allow for me to get this information to you. And we're going to have a good time, great people. What I believe as we conclude or come into the end of 2023, I believe God desires for us all, right? Not just me, not just your favorite pastor, preacher, or teacher, but for us all to come into the knowledge of God's voice for ourselves so that we'll be able to do what God would have for us to do, be who God would have us to be so we can have all that God would have for us to have in this world right here in the land of the living. So tap in and tune in tomorrow as we talk about us exercising our ability to hear from God. So until then, great people, I love you. Peace.